Okay, I'm Brett Premack, and uh, I just wanted to do a little video today. This is the anniversary of my debut as Jazz Video Guy, 16 years ago today, March 29th, 2006. I started posting my first jazz videos, and YouTube was news new back then. I was probably one of the first, I guess I was one of the first people actually posting video, jazz video on YouTube. At the time I was uh, producing websites, just had gotten back into video. I was doing websites with Sonny Rollins and Joe Lovano and Denny Zeitlin and Hendrick Merkins and some other people. And Started playing around with video again after a long absence. YouTube arrived. I just started. Uh, today, I want to say a few words about that, but also uh, today would have been the 74th birthday of Michael Brecker, who left us at the age of 57, much, much too young. Michael was an incredible musician and a really wonderful person, warm, genuine, caring person. I certainly miss him. I certainly continue to listen to his music and be inspired by it. And in the mid-90s, Michael hooked up with McCoy Tyner. They played together for two or three years around the world, made some great music. And I want to start out today's uh, presentation with... Uh, something by Michael Brecker and McCoy Tyner from the 1996 North Sea Jazz Festival with Avery Sharp on bass and Aaron Scott on drums. Here we go.
unbelievable, huh? Michael Brecker, McCoy Tyner. Incredible they played together. Seems logical. Michael being so uh, influenced by, inspired by John Coltrane. Uh, today's International Piano Day. Joyce Glasgow, one of our loving supporters, reminded me. You know, 16 years is a long time. And it's gone by pretty quickly. You know, they say that uh, life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end, the faster it spins. And it's sure going by fast for me. I'm 73. I'm going to be 74. Michael turned 74. I would have turned 74 today. He's about three months older than me. A lot of 2006, I started this before the smartphone, before social media. Uh, some bad things have happened. The rise of fascism in America with Donald Trump. Uh, we've lost, and COVID, that was horrible. We've lost a lot of people. Pianist, I mean, we lost McCoy. We've lost Chick. Uh, we lost Wayne. Uh, but, but this is life. It goes on. And we're not here forever. So I think it's really important that we live in the moment and live in gratitude. And I'm certainly grateful for what I've had in this life. It's been an incredible journey, especially being involved with this music and knowing the people that I've admired so greatly and working with some of them, like Michael Brecker. And uh, YouTube has been difficult. YouTube, YouTube is, I mean, things changed. Everything stays the same. YouTube's changed a lot. Uh, in some ways for the better, in some ways for the worse. Uh, it's a lot harder for me to reach my audience because of the YouTube algorithm now. I've tried to play the game their way. It's not happening. I'm not going to, I can't change the way I am. Who I, if fewer people watch my videos, nothing that I can do about that. They're up there. There's, I've got millions of views. I got 2,500 videos on YouTube. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a lot of other things to watch, and people's concentration span has uh, diminished. Uh, here's an interesting comment. We won AI, automated improvisation. Yeah, AI is definitely going to change the world. It's just beginning. But it's impossible to predict what it's going to do. It's kind of like when the Wright brothers invented the airplane, I guess it was 2006, something like that. They could have never predicted that in 100 years, people would be flying all around the world. They'd be leaving the planet, going to the moon. And we can't predict what's going to happen with AI, except it's going to happen a lot faster. Because the AI, the artificial intelligence we have now is, is machine artificial intelligence. We teach machines what to do, and they they take the data, they interpret it, and the results are pretty amazing. Get on chat GPT. Uh, it's not perfect, but there's something in the on the horizon here. I don't know if it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, singularity. That's when machines become as smart as and smarter than people. How is that going to change the world? A lot of people fear that uh, they're gonna, it's going to be like robots. What's that movie, iRobot? I forget where the robots try to take over the world. Geez, I really don't think it's going to happen, but we'll see. I mean, we it's a similar situation to, to nuclear energy. When Einstein re, uh, realized that equals MC square, and then what do they do with that? They make atomic bombs, they, the horrible destruction and loss of life in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But that was 1945. No atomic uh, bombs have been set off. No nuclear weapons have, has been set off since then. Although that could happen. I don't know. I'm not going to predict the future. As I said, I just want to live in the moment. And I'm very grateful for my life and for uh, this music, which has inspired me, uh, entertained me, supported me. People who create the people who create this music are very lucky to be involved in it uh, because it's different. It's special. There's really nothing like this on the planet. Uh, some comments here. Yes, uh, art and AI. That's going to be huge. Uh, you know these new AI programs that you t uh, type in a sentence of text and then it creates something, 
and it sucks in data from and images from the internet. And sometimes it uses copyrighted content. That's going to be an issue. Uh, let's see, AI's art is working in another. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, inspiration and possibilities. Uh, God created man, never could. Okay, all right, interesting. Uh, AI can feel okay. Yep, that's working. Uh, people are encouraged and trained to have short attention span, which is yeah, yeah. This whole short video thing and the death of uh, of people's attention span and multitasking—that is something I'm not crazy about. I am part of that world as well. My attention span. Well, I'm old now, or sort of old. I'm getting old. I can't deny that. Uh, my concentration, my memory, my attention span isn't what it is, but uh, you know, and also the way people consume content, they watch video, very few people, not very few, but few people go to the movies anymore. That was like kind of destroyed by the pandemic. People consume uh, media through computers, through smartphones, laptops, televisions, and they can be doing 10 different things at once or they, they watch a video for 30 seconds, they're gone. I can't do anything about that. The only thing I can do is document some of this incredible creativity and some people are gonna dig it and some people aren't. But I know a lot of people dig it because my videos have 50 million views. Yes, 50 million, that's a lot of views. I know there's a lot of people out there who dig this music and uh, whether or not they watch the whole video, I don't know. And uh, there's a lot of really, really good young musicians out there uh, who are playing this music inspired by some of the same incredible artists that I have been inspired by. And jazz lives. Jazz is going to go on. And Sonny Rollins once said to me, you know, you can't kill jazz. You can't kill a spirit. And there's something very spiritual, very special about the art of creativity and playing this music and improv improvising. It's not an easy thing to do, my goodness. But we have masters like the people you see on this channel and other jazz masters who are around the world. Jazz is now a global medium. People all over the planet love it. And I can see why. So I've changed jazz video guy a bit in that I'm only doing, I'm doing one program a week. This is a special thing because of Michael's birthday. I wanted to acknowledge that because of it, he's been important to me. He was a friend and an inspiration and uh, also this anniversary. But Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, out of my head, the Brett Premack show, I am essentially a jazz video DJ uh, playing some of my favorite music and uh, talking about it a little bit. And uh, let me show you uh, what's coming up uh, this Sunday. Um, Whoop, hold on. Oh, I screwed that up. Pardon me. On guitar, George Benson. On bass, Stanley Clark. On On guitar, George Benson. On bass, Stanley Clark. On trumpet, Freddie Hubbard. On clarinet and miscellaneous instruments, Rossan Roland Kirk. On flutes, Hubert Laws. On percussion, Ayrton Marrera. On tenor sax, Sonny Rollins. On piano, McCoy Tyner. On trombone, Bill Watrous. On drums, Lenny White. Yeah, those videos are from uh, a show that was on TV in 1975 on PBS Soundstage, uh, the Downbeat Reader's Poll Awards. And uh, interesting documentation of some of the great players of that time. Some of them, unfortunately, are no longer with us. Uh, I'll be playing videos from that show. 
and speaking a little bit about some of those players and, and that music and that time. It was a different time, certainly. You know, it was just kind of at the beginning. That's when jazz fusion, I mean, I hate labels, jazz rock, I mean, smooth, just different music was played. And Miles and, and Wayne and Joe Zawinul and Herbie and Chick Corea and John McLaughlin. And they gave birth to a whole new era of jazz that uh, had, there was a lot of popularity. Uh, a new audience, so to speak. I mean, yeah, Ayerto. That's right. I love Ayerto. Uh, Bitches Brew, Miles Davis's best-selling album, although since then kind of blew, went back into the number one spot. But that music uh, brought new people under the tent. And it's changed. I mean, it also gave birth to what's called smooth jazz, uh, which is kind of a more relaxed uh form of the music which some people like other people don't you know music is 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 uh, very subjective i like to say that uh, one man's or one woman's albert eiler is another's kenny g i mean it could be we hear things completely differently that's and the thing about jazz that's so fascinating it's really an umbrella for so many different types of music and as jazz has expanded around the world Many global influences have uh, come into the music as well. Here's a can't, thank you, Karma Farmer. That's a very, very interesting name, handle. Uh, Richard Bell says, looking forward to, yeah, you know, a lot of influencers. That's a big word now, influencers. Is, no, jazz is not primarily instrumental. Uh, vocals have played an important part in the world of jazz. But it is a lot instrumental. And unfortunately, some people, that's hard for them to find an entry into it. With the loss of music education in schools, listeners aren't perhaps as sophisticated as they used to be. It takes some work to get into jazz. Although I can tell you from experience, many times I have been to many concerts, many clubs where people in the audience knew nothing about jazz. They just happened to be there and they got sucked up and became part of the music. I remember when I was early seventies, I was driving a cab going to NYU film school. Keith Jarrett's American Quartet was at Slugs. That was this great band with Dewey Redman and Charlie Hayden and Paul Motion. And a friend of mine who was a cab driver, who was a rock guy said, uh, what are you doing tonight? I said, oh, I'm going down to Slugs and here Keith Jarrett. I said, who is that? I said, you could check it out. I said, I don't know. I, I don't like jazz. You don't like jazz. What have you heard? He said, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Okay, well, come check it out. Try it. Lo and behold, I brought the guy down to Slugs. Ten minutes into it, the guy's sitting there spellbound, and he became a jazz fan. And that was uh, a magic moment. It said to me, if people will just hear it and give it a chance, it's a whole other thing. Hello, Canada. Nice. Glad you could uh, be in the house. Uh, okay. Clyde says likes classic jazz, fusion, smooth jazz. He likes Pat Metheny and Kenny G, although Pat doesn't seem to like Kenny's music very much. Uh, I'd love to share my experience with Ayerto, but it's too long for the comment section. Funny shit. I love it when people like tempt you. I got a story, but I can't tell you. You know, I posted a... Uh, uh, a Jocko video on Sunday on my show. Jocko Beer Stories, Big Band Live uh, in Japan in 1982. That uh, was a great big band with uh, Randy Brecker and Bob Mincer and Toots Thielman, Don Elias on percussion, Peter Erskine on drums, and Jocko, an amazing musician, a tragic story about his unfortunate demise. And a friend of mine, uh, Michael Pettison, who's a set, wonderful saxophone player, he, his comment was, I got a great story about Jocko because I was on that tour. He was playing with Dave Brubeck at the time, but I can't share it in public. Oh, why, why are you torturing us? Why do you do this to us? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for Rock and Blues Pentatonic Skills, the first store to open up what it is. For, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's all that has to happen is for the doors to open. So hopefully, maybe some people will find this channel. They'll listen to the music. They'll get turned on to it. They'll check it out. Certainly, 
There is no shortage of jazz on the internet. In fact, jazz offers uh, serious listeners and new listeners an opportunity to hear music from the entire spectrum of jazz. From the early days, uh, Louis Armstrong, Art Tatum, Count Basie, Duke Ellington, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Herbie Hancock. I mean, it's pretty incredible. And some of the new artists. I have a favorite uh, new pianist. Uh, uh, I have a number of favorite new pianists, in fact. <laughs> yeah. Uh, check out the live broadcast from Slug if you want to, Slugs if you want to hear what uh, is happening today. Uh, Spike Wilner has done a fantastic job with Slugs and Mesro putting those things online every night. Um, hello, London, a great city. I've been to London 10 times. I enjoy that city. Uh, Sydney Bechet, you know, in France, sadly, outside the United States, jazz is much more popular than it is here in the United States. Uh, there's a park in Nice where they used to have a jazz festival. I think it was called the Grand Parade de Jazz, pardon my French. And there are statues in the park of Miles Davis and Dizzy Gillespie and Sidney Bechet. And I wish we had the same. I mean, uh, there are statues, statues of John Coltrane and a few other people, but jazz is like in the back of the bus still in the United States. Uh, Richard Bell says jazz encompasses so many vastly different styles genre. I think there might, that there's something for everyone if they just open their ears and minds. Yeah. Oh, by the pianist, a Japanese young woman I refer to as Miki Yamanaka, who was a great, great pianist. I'll play some stuff for her uh, on a future show. So that's it. I don't want to continue here. It's been fun just saying hello. Thank you for your support. I wouldn't be here, wouldn't do this without the incredible viewers from all around the world. Uh, your comments sometimes bring tears to my eyes. They keep me going. And I'm just very grateful to my uh, my musician friends that I've worked with and I know and I've seen. Uh, I've had a better life because of them. And I hope that you too uh, can enjoy them and this music and be inspired and uh, follow my suggestion to uh, live in the moment and be grateful for the lives we have. Thanks and hopefully I'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>